Hey, hi everyone. I am Madhulakshman Atiketi. In this video, we will be having a basic understanding of what is Pi Spark. To know what is Pi Spark, first of all, we have to know what is Spark. So, are you ready to enter into this beautiful world of Spark? So, first to enter into this beautiful world of Spark, we need to know few terms. We need to have the basic understanding of few terms. First is centralized system. What is a centralized system? In centralized system, all the data is processed and also stored in a single server. This system holds well when the volume of data is less. What if the volume of data is being increased? If at all we see the present world, all the activities of human are being digitalized and we need to store the data somewhere and there is a hundred percent probability the data will be going on increasing day by day. So what if the volume of data goes on increasing day by day dude? In centralized system, we have two options to solve this. First one, we can upgrade the server. The second one, we can increase the hardware capacity of the equipment being used in a centralized system. So the above two points that I've mentioned are called vertical scalability. But do you think this vertical scalability will work or will be a full fledged option in this present world where the data is being increasing rapidly? I don't think so. Vertical scalability beyond a point is not possible. And you know what? It's been estimated that digital data will increase by 30 times in next year's dude. So we need to find a solution for this problem. So there comes the distributed systems. Distributed systems says that you can use me for the rapid increase of data that you have been facing the problem. So in distributed systems, the huge amount of data is split across the multiple systems and it is processed in a distributed manner. And the processing of data that is observed in distributed systems is called distributed computing. As you can observe in this diagram, this is a simple simple diagram showing how the distributed system works. Now we will see more about distributed systems. Now you can observe Apache Hadoop on the screen. Hey dude, what is this Apache Hadoop? And this is a new term for us. Yes, of course it is a new term. Apache Hadoop is one of the most widely used framework for distributed computing. Hadoop consists of two parts. First is HDFS. HDFS is mainly used for storage and retrieval of the huge amount of data. If at all we want to store data or if at all we want to retrieve the data from the source, we use HDFS part in Hadoop. The other part, MapReduce, it is, a, it is basically a processing engine. MapReduce is the processing framework in Hadoop. So if you write a program to compute something, the processing would be done using MapReduce and the storage and retrieval part were taken care by HDFS. Now you might be having a clarity of which part will do what. Now for a few seconds or for a few minutes, we will keep Hadoop and MapReduce aside and we will know about Apache Spark. Apache Spark is also a framework for processing the data dude. Just like MapReduce, we can use Apache Spark framework for processing the data. In most of the real time, Hadoop and Spark coexist together where Hadoop is used for storing the data and Spark is used for processing those distributed data. So, hey dude, just now we have said Hadoop is used along with MapReduce. 
where MapReduce is used for processing the data. Now you are saying we will be using Spark along with Hadoop, in which Spark will take care the take care of the processing data. Why? I'll give you an answer for this. See, now we will see a few more points about MapReduce. High latency is observed in MapReduce. High latency in the sense when we are processing the data, a huge amount of data, processing is taking slow in MapReduce. And MapReduce is not well optimized for iterative operations. See, obviously, we will be having iterative op operations in that huge amount of data, right? So, MapReduce is not well optimized for iterative operations. It will take a bit longer time compared to the other processing engines. And also, this is not only the reason why we are using Spark. The other reason why we are going for Spark along with Hadoop is that MapReduce is a framework for batch processing, dude. What now? This is again a new term for us. What is batch processing? Batch processing, I'll take an example. So, like if the, there is a data and we are processing instructions on the data, okay? Like instead of processing every instruction as it occurs, the system might collect all the instructions and process them at a particular time. That is called batch processing. Batch processing will not process the instruction as it occurs. As, as if, like if we give the instruction, the instruction will not be going to perform at that particular point of time itself. The instructions will be collected and processed at a particular time. For batch processing, I will give you one good example that what uh, that where we use batch processing in the real world we know atm machines right atm processing when we step into an atm either we withdraw money or we deposit money like we can do any kind of operation so technically if we speak the atm processing can be of two ways First is batch processing of ATM. The second one is real-time processing of ATM. So we'll see first what is batch processing. Suppose if I am, if I step into an ATM, if at all I have done a withdrawal on my account of any $2,000 uh, on my account. So it, it is not that I will only do one kind of operation in one day. I can withdraw it and withdraw as many times as possible. I can deposit as many times as possible in my account, right? So in batch processing, what we will do is like we will collect all such transactions the end of each day and process them in one batch. We will not perform the transaction on the transaction history at the time the action is performed to be more clear. When I perform a withdrawal, our ATM transaction of withdrawal will not be hit on the transaction history at the time when the withdrawal is performed. Transaction history is basically a front end of front end overview of transactions on the account. But back end, the balance is being deducted successfully and everything will happen. But front end transaction history will not show the withdrawal transaction when it is being performed in batch processing. In batch processing, we will collect those transactions at the end of each day and process them in a batch. We will collect all the withdrawals and deposits at the end of each day and process them in a batch. But at the back end, the balance deduction will be happened successfully. But front end, we will not show at that particular time when we do a withdraw. All this withdrawal and deposit transactions will be hit on the transaction history that is front end overview of the transactions on our account will be done at the end of the day through batch. But if we take real time processing that what we are observing in present is whenever 
there is a withdrawal on our account in ATM, then and there itself the transaction account, transaction history of the account is being hit. And in transaction history, we can see that so and so amount is withdrawal from this so and so account. This is a real time processing. I think like you are clear now what is a batch processing and what is a real time processing. So MapReduce is a framework for batch processing. MapReduce can't handle continuous stream of data efficiently as it occurs. Continuous stream of data, continuous stream of instructions as it occurs, it can, can't perform efficiently on the data. So these were the disadvantages of MapReduce. So we'll go one step uh, forward into Hadoop. So if we take Hadoop again, and if you're talking about ingestion of the data and performing ETL operations on the ingested data, here ETL operations are, E stands for extraction, extracting the data, T transfer, transforming the data, and L transfer, loading. We need to extract the data from somewhere, right? That is what we call extraction and transform. Transform the data in the sense we need to perform some transformations on the data. Obviously, there will be a requirement where we need to perform the transformations on the data like group bias or reduce bias or we can perform any transformation on the data and there will be a requirement where we need to load this data into separate files that we call as loading. So to perform this ETL operations, Hadoop requires separate frameworks. For example, it requires H Hive, HQL, which looks similar to SQL for storing the data and performing extraction on the data. And Hadoop also may use Mahout for machine learning operations. So now why we are discussing all these things here, here is, see, if at all we see Hadoop is using separate frameworks to, to handle different kinds of operations on data. Do you think this is suggestible? No, I need a platform. I need a platform where all these operations should be performed on a single framework. On a single stage, there comes our king, Spark. Spark is answer for all these problems. Spark is a unified platform for all these options, for all these operations on the data, for all these ETL operations. They can be performed on a single stage. That stage name is called Spark. Spark doesn't have high latency compared to MapReduce. Spark can perform iterations on the data very fast as compared to MapReduce. Spark can co perform computations on the data very fast compared to MapReduce. And coding in Spark is user friendly. If we compare both Spark and MapReduce, coding in MapReduce is complex. We can code Spark in Python, R and Scala. So coding Spark in Python the integration of Python and Spark, we call it as PySpark. So we came to our final destination word that is PySpark. So I hope you understood the basic definition of or the basic usage of Spark and also PySpark and also why we are opting for Spark, not MapReduce. And why we are like, why we use PySpark. Hope you find this video informative. And if you like this video, please like this video and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.